All right, I've got a um, another one of these exercise type videos that I thought you all might enjoy. And so this goes toward the question of how good are your ears, right? So when I review speakers, I always do my listening first, and then I go back and look at the measurements. And I've been doing uh, competitive car audio for a long time. In the last few years, I haven't really been doing it much because I've been really focusing my efforts on this channel. Uh, but without that experience of trying to achieve a really good overall tonal balance and having imaging and staging and all these things in a car audio system, which is incredibly hard to do, I wouldn't have the ability to pick out certain things. When I review speakers, what I'm trying to do is listen to the overall balance of the speaker. Does it sound top heavy? You know, does it sound bright? Does the bass uh, does it sound too boomy, right? And some of that obviously is related to the room. The mid-range sounds too forward, too chesty, too hollow, too relaxed, upper mid-range, potentially sibilant, lower mid-range, or I should say lower tweeter range, uh, too sibilant again. All of those attributes that we use to define characteristics of a speaker in subjective terms. And then what we do is we try to match them up to the objective data and see, okay, well, this kind of makes sense because I was hearing this thing, or, yeah, man, I don't know, I just can't really put my finger on it. Sometimes a certain sound may, for example, maybe it sounds like it should be lower in frequency, but turns out it's higher in frequency, almost an octave higher or not. And just as an aside, if you really want to train your ears, there's a website called soundgym.com, and that's what I've been using for the past five years or so since I started this channel. And that's been really beneficial to me to help me identify certain areas. Um, so with this video, what I want to do is I want to play you some sound clips. And what I'm going to do is have pink noise. We're going to start with the original pink noise. I'm going to play it for a few seconds. And then I'm going to alternate, I guess, between different equalizations. So first you're going to have a negative 3 dB and then you're going to have a plus 3 dB four different frequencies. I can't do all the frequencies I wanna do just for the sake of time, but really this is more of an exercise of how, how do you define these things that you're hearing, assuming that you can hear them. And you may find, depending on your own setup, maybe if you're using a laptop speaker or something like that, some of these things may not stand out. So I do suggest trying to listen to something, at least headphones. If you listen with headphones, you should at least be able to notice the differences. But once we hear those differences, how do we define them? How do I define them? And what would you say is the subjective term that best fits what you're hearing? I don't know. I just thought it would be kind of fun. So let's kick that off, okay? We're going to start with 100 hertz. And I, just as a fair warning, maybe go ahead and turn your volume down a little bit. And then once you kind of get to a comfortable volume level, you can adjust it and start this testing back over, okay? And I'm going to put a time stamp. Uh, right around this point, so it'll make it easier for you to go back. To me, the negative 3 dB didn't stand out certainly as much as the positive 3 dB, and you're going to find that to probably be the case for you throughout the duration of this exercise. For 100 meet for, for 120 hertz, what I notice is the lack or the gain of rumble. Uh, I would say that that typically lines up with what I describe as more kick or more punch from a speaker that maybe has a little bit elevated mid bass through that 100 to 200 hertz region somewhere in there. Now let's try 250 hertz. Yeah, big difference between the plus and the negative 3 dB for sure. Uh, the negative 3 dB, not as noticeable again, but the plus 3 dB, definitely noticeable. And it sound, the best way I can describe it is it sounds very resonant. Sounds very, uh, maybe you might use the term boxy, but it sounds very resonant to me. Okay, now let's try 500 Hertz.
500 hertz to me, negative, it sounds a little bit hollow, but then when it's positive 3 dB, it kind of sounds like this. So that's kind of interesting. What about one kilohertz? To me, negative 3 dB sounds like a recess in the sound. Positive 3 dB at one kilohertz sounds like it's pushing forward. What about 2.5 kilohertz? All right, to me, that one also sounded like the difference in forward versus back. Uh, and more noticeably in this region than it was in the 1K region. Uh, I would also say that it almost sounded a little bit airy there. It, and I kind of find that interesting. It makes me wonder maybe if there's some kind of hint of, you know, typically air is going to be like 8, 10K, 10K and above. But yeah, that one was kind of interesting. Uh, be curious to know what you think. Now let's try 4K. Oh yeah, 4K plus 3 dB definitely was just like kind of launching out at me and it sounded, so I'm used to hearing that with sibilance. So my brain is already kind of like, this is going to sound sibilant. If I were doing this blind, I don't know that I would describe 4K with the pink noise as sibilant, uh, but usually that's kind of the sibilant area and you might catch a little bit of a glare. And to be honest, I would say that maybe even pink noise is not as useful for the higher frequencies when trying to describe uh, abnormalities, I guess, in the frequency response. So maybe I might try to do a follow-up where I use maybe a band of tones over this. I don't know, probably blow your eardrums out. You guys will have to let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and try seven kilohertz now, okay? Definitely at 7K, that defines your sibilant. It's it's much more 100%. Now, sibilants, you know, it depends on what you read and who you're talking to. Uh, male and female vocals and the mouth and the way that comes out, it can range in a, in a couple different frequencies. You know, usually I'm going to anchor it around like, I'd say maybe, I mean, ballpark, let's just say 4 to 8K. Ballpark is kind of in that sibilant range. And again, you know, you may have a male vocal that's sibilant at 5K and then another male vocal that's sibilant at 6K. And actually, I have a de -er to knock down the sibilance on my microphone, just for what it's worth. Now let's try 10 kilohertz. All right, to me, that is all the difference in dull versus very lively. So that one, are, you know, we talked about that 2.5 and I said, man, it kind of sounds like it has air. And then I said, usually that's like 10K and above. Yeah, 10K definitely sounded like it had more air when it was plus 3 dB versus the original and certainly sounded like it had less air at negative 3 dB versus the original. And almost to the point where I'm like, just... Forget what I said about 2.5K having some air. That's just some weird subjective stuff going on in my brain. Uh, but it does show you just how different frequencies and the addition or subtraction of them can really kind of change your perception of what you're hearing. So I really want, what I hope is that you guys will take the time, and girls, uh, will take the time and give this a few rounds and maybe even do it blind. Just close your eyes and listen and if you have a notepad or something, just kind of write down the differences that you hear. I don't know that I'll do something more in depth than this because it, it's probably going to take a lot of work to do what I really would like to do. But if this video, you know, if it does well, right, because most of my videos lately have just done, not done well. And I've been like, damn, I thought these were pretty good. Um, but if this one really just kind of 
gets rolling and, and does well, and that'll show me that there's enough interest about something like that, then I'll probably do another version of these and maybe do a couple different frequencies and maybe even try, uh, if I can find some music to try it with, then I'll try that. Maybe instruments. I'll just pick a couple instruments and we'll walk through those. But for now, I wanted to kind of kick off the conversation with Pink Noise. I really, truly am curious what you all think. Please let me know in the comments what you hear. And if you don't mind, just step through them like, hey, the things that I'm hearing at 100 hertz with plus or minus 3 dB, this is how it sounds to me. And this is how I would describe it. And I'm, I'm curious if there's enough consensus where the subjective terms just kind of fall into place. Or for example, if I get a handful of people saying uh, maybe bright at 7K and then another handful of people saying bright at 2.5 because even I can kind of fluctuate in my descriptors for these sounds. And, and that's one reason just above or for many reasons actually that I'm really pro having data. Uh, I mean, just imagine me as a subjective only reviewer trying to say that this sounded airy or bright or whatever, but maybe there's a couple different ways I define it and you don't know. So with the data, I've got a way to say, yep, here it is, 10K, it's boosted, and this is how I would describe that sound. And it gives you an anchor as well to understand where I'm coming from. You don't have to guess, and it doesn't really change with reviews because the data is always there. And you can always go back and say, yeah, Aaron said this thing, but the data's showing this, and normally he says this with that, so maybe he just didn't have a moon pie and an RC Cola that day. I don't know. By the way, haven't had either of those in a long time, but sounds really damn good right now. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. If you guys enjoy this, please, you know, like, subscribe, share with your friends. And I would just like, this stuff is kind of cool. And I hope that you all enjoy it too. And we can all nerd out together. If you'd like to support what I'm doing here, you can do so one of a couple different ways. You can join me at patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner. Or if you want to use any of my generic affiliate links to go buy anything from Amazon, Crutchville, Best Buy, whatever. Like you want to go buy a new TV from Amazon, do that. You want to buy a new TV from Crutchville, you can do that.